Most human beings even struggle to know a little bit of peace or joy in their life. Why most human beings are not able to establish this as their quality? I know too many philosophies have been said, but let's look at it technically. Why is it not happening, something so simple? So all experiences of life, how are they entering us? If you breathe the coolness of the air, how does it get you? Neurologically, it travels almost instantaneously pleasant. If you eat or taste something pleasant or see something pleasant or hear something pleasant, essentially, first it touches your sense perception. From there, Quite instantaneously, the neurological system takes it up to your brain and creates a pleasant experience or an unpleasant experience. This pleasantness of experience or unpleasantness of experience is not entirely in the stimuli from outside, partly yes. It also depends on how you are at that moment. You are in a frustrated, disturbed mood. Somebody plays nice music. Yes or no? Somebody playing very nice music. It further puts you into rage. So we must understand, there are two aspects to it. One is the nature of the stimuli, another is how we are right now, which means what our impressions are, whatever samskara is, what our karmic substance is. So when everything cooperates and pleasantness happens, You saw the morning sunrise, instead of being irritated, oh God, one more day, you felt, wow, nice. <sighs> Telling wonderful. Now that's nice because the neurological stimuli, the stimuli, when it touches the sense organ, from there, neurologically, it travels almost instantaneously and does things. But there's another system beyond your neurological system, which is the pranamaya kosha, which is as elaborate if not more elaborate than the neurological system, but it moves, I would say, a hundred times or more slower than the neurological system. If you hold on to the pleasantness of experience, the neurological pleasantness that's happening, because you're seeing the sunrise and you're feeling pleasant, usually, wow <laughs> or something else or something. Most people do not hold on to the pleasantness of the experience that's happening. They will hop all over the place. So if you hold on, to certain pleasantness of neurological pleasantness. I'm trying to separate these two things due to lack of terminology in English language. What you… let's say you watch the sunrise and you felt wonderful for a moment. That moment is neurological pleasantness or sensory pleasantness. For it to become part of your life energy, you need to hold it. You need to hold on to that experience. You must be able to stay there because it's at least a hundred times lower for lack of exact measure, I'm saying at least. So if you are able to hold on to any, any experience, normally if you can hold on to twenty-four minutes, any experience of sweetness of experience, even if it's taste, taste, smell, vision, auditory, if you do this to yourself, the pleasantness of the neurological system, once it sinks deeper into the pranic system, then sitting here blissfully becomes a normal thing. The sensory experiences, if you stay with it, this will become your quality. It's not something you have to do bliss. Ways ...to live a joyful life and smile. You can fake a smile, but you can't fake the effect smiling has on your brain. In 2020, researchers from the University of South Australia published a study evaluating the impacts of a fake smile. 
They did this by forcing facial muscles to mimic the movements of a smile by asking the study participants to hold a pen between their teeth. They found that the forceful practice of smiling stimulated the amygdala, the part of our brain that releases our feel-good neurotransmitters. Their study proved that smiling alone can trick the brain into thinking you're happy to do something you love each day. Some people are blessed with jobs or businesses that allow them to do what they're passionate about. But if you're not part of this group, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy a happy life. It's still possible by squeezing in stuff you love to do throughout. Listen to your favorite music. Eat food that you love. Soak in a warm bubble bath. Binge watch K-dramas Hayib. That's me. Take dancing classes. Shoot hoops. Cuddle with your kids. Read a book on the commute to and from work. Enjoy a cold beer. Catch up with loved ones. Do not. I can go on and on. But you get the point. It doesn't have to be big as long as you do something you love daily. 3. Practice mindful eating. Don't worry. This isn't about what you should and should not eat. Rather, it's about how you should eat your food. Although some people use it for weight loss, mindful eating focuses on the way you consume your food more than what's in it. It's an approach to eating where you slow down to take in the entire dining experience. To eat mindfully means to pay close attention to how the food looks, smells, and it requires that you take note of what your body feels with every bite and pay close attention to your body signals when you're full. 4. Adopt an attitude of gratitude. Again, a thankful heart is a happy heart. And again, it's not just a quote. Research has proven that practicing gratitude positively impacts our feelings of happiness. There are so many ways of practicing gratitude throughout the day. Start by being thankful for another day once you wake up as the day goes on. Keep an eye out for things to be grateful for. It can be the little things, like a sunny day or easily finding a parking spot. Some days will also give you bigger things to be thankful for like getting a job offer or an acceptance letter from the university of your choice. End the day by remembering good things that happened and being thankful for each and every one of them. 5. Exercise regularly You don't need to be gym buff to enjoy the mood-boosting benefits of exercise. According to Harvard health experts, exercises like running, walking, swimming, yoga, or biking release hormones that boost our mood and reduce our stress levels. They also talked about a study that found that walking for 90 minutes made the same improvements in mood as that of antidepressants. Generally, the advice is to have at least half an hour of moderate physical activity daily. You may not always have the time, and it's okay. A quick 15-minute walk around the neighborhood do and is still better than doing nothing.